Hey you, it's true with a first look at the new SSR Napoleon. This storm unit comes with a very decent speed of 483 and a stunning skill set. Let's check it out. Her first skill is called Revolution and I do think it is truly revolutionary. I think this is one of the very best active skills in the entire game right now. It gives one spirit, costs 70 time units and deals 50% damage to all enemies. But wait, it does get better. She actually deals 200% damage if she has survived for 200 time units on the battlefield already. So Napoleon deals 4 times 200% with this skill then. And this is a bit similar to Odin's Time Blaster skill because while this attack doesn't steal spirit from the enemy, it does generate a lot of spirit for you if you hit enemies that have 50 time units or more. For each of them you get one spirit and if they have 100 or more you even get two spirit. Which does mean that if you hit four enemies with 100 time units or more, this skill actually gains you nine spirit in total. Very close to Genie's Golden Sandstorm, but much better. Why? Because this attack is also an execute skill. So yes, this is the very first skill in the game that attacks all enemies and can execute. That means it ignores any effects that would prevent targets from being defeated, ignoring hold ground plus, charges, all that kind of stuff. It also seems to be a blast type active skill because it does ignore counter stand status effect and skin passive skills, so that is very important. But it does not ignore stealth, so that is something that will save you from this attack if you are an enemy of Napoleon. Yes, this skill doesn't deal all that much damage, but as a clearing skill I think it is absolutely super strong. Let's see, but first let's move on to the next skill that is called the Stun Cannon. This one costs 2 spirit, 50 time units and targets 2 random enemies. We know this already from Cthulhu before. Also there's an additional random element because both of them are randomly granted either 50, 100 or 200 time unit stun. Napoleon gains one charge and this skill is only locked until she used another skill. The two spirit cost on this can probably be forgiven, especially because the TU are pretty low and might even get lower once we look at her passives. But first we move on to the third active skill and that one is called Time Shockwave. Yet again another enhanced time strike skill, this one actually costing one spirit and 100 time units, dealing 100% damage to two enemies as a base case. 400% already if the target has 50 time units or more, 600% if the target has 100 time units or more and 800% if the target has 150 time units or more. So this one might deal up to 1600%. And a nice side effect right here is that each target that she hits with this that isn't defeated will cause a stun against one random enemy that was not hit for 100 time units. So I definitely also quite like this skill. And then we get to the last one, which is her instant skill called Glorious Cannon. One spirit cost, one time unit cost, 400% damage to one enemy. Now, funnily enough, this is actually my least favorite skill on her skill set, even though it is the instant skill. And that is not even because this one is having an awakening scaling. So 400% is the base damage, but for each additional awakening on Napoleon, this deals 100% more, so up to 800% maximum damage, which is quite nice for an instant skill and one spirit cost, but it doesn't ignore anything except damage reduction effects. So I mean, at least that is something, but I kind of prefer her other skills. Also, this skill can only be used if she has three charges, but that should be relatively easy for her. This skill becomes locked for 75 time units after use. Quite a long time, but I don't mind it too much because then she can probably focus more on the other skills. 
which may not ignore damage reduction effects, but are still very, very good. Looking at her passives next, we have the flanking maneuver. She has 80% damage reduction from attacks if she has no charges and is not alone on the battlefield. So only if she's the last one standing, then she will lose this armor permanently. This, of course, acts as an additional protection because if she has no charges, that means she has no hold ground. The charges, yet again, on this unit act like a hold ground. And not only that, but each time one of these charges gets consumed, one of these hold grounds gets consumed by damage from an attack, she heals for 30% of max HP. We have already seen this with Water Cinderella in similar fashion. Now, except for the second active skill, how does she gain these charges? She will gain a charge and be healed for 30% of her max HP each time another ally gets the turn. So kind of like Rapunzel, but with the charge mechanic on top of that. And if that wasn't enough, she's also a storm support because each time a storm ally gets the turn, they will also heal for 30% of their max HP. This includes Napoleon, so if she gets turns, she has the 30% heal straight away. So all in all, a very decent survival and support passive. The second passive is arguably even better. Well, I mean, it's a different category, so you can't really say this, but it is called Naval Tactician. She is immovable and she is sleep immune if there are any water enemies on the battlefield. So this is... a uh, very hard, if not the hardest counter ever against all water sleep units. And not only does it affect water sleep units, but it also kind of affects cursed sleep if you are combining them. So even if you have only water Cinderella and some other cursed sleep units in your team, you will not be able to sleep Napoleon. Additionally, whenever Napoleon defeats an enemy with an attack, and keep in mind, it might be very hard to sleep her. All allies are purified, so all of them will wake up or get rid of burn or poison. And to round it out, whenever she has three charges, which I have to remind you again, is quite easy to do given that she gets charges basically on every ally turn, her TU costs are reduced by another 40%. So the 50 time unit skill becomes a 30 time unit skill. The 70 TU skill revolution goes below 50 time units. And that is even before weapon effects are considered. So that is the entire skill set of the perfect Empress, Napoleon. And she is yet another very, very hard counter against sleep, I would say not necessarily against Cursed Sleep. So that is why we will need to stay tuned on what Earth Cleopatra brings to the battlefield next week. But focusing on Storm Napoleon for now, she brings the very first skill to the battlefield that can execute all enemies at once. Of course, only if their HP are somewhat low, but I think that is a fair requirement. Again, funnily enough, I think her biggest weakness might be stun <laughs> because if she gets stunned and not gets turns then she can't make use of her skills that the good thing is that even without getting turns she will constantly be healing and recharging so if it's not something like storm king arthur's regal wave master taking her out it will be rather difficult to defeat her i mean even in general i say it is hard to defeat her without execute skills poison and burn of course can help against this kind of charge mechanic of course this is yet again another unit that you don't want to run in a burn team also not really in a sleep team but i think you really love to have her in a stun team of course in a storm team but also in quite a few hybrid teams the really great thing i think about her is that this is yet another unit where even at one copy you can already gain great value i'm not claiming yet that she is as good as at one copy as storm king arthur can be from the reinforcements but if you look at her skill set yes of course her stats increase like any unit with additional awakenings she even has a skill that scales in awakenings but much less so than the previous units 
just giving a little bit more damage on the Glorious Cannon. And the Revolution, even at lower damage, can still take out enemies sitting at hold ground plus, for example, triggered, gain a lot of spirit for your team. The other two skills have a lot of stun potential against opponents, especially if you don't take them out, which is actually easier to do if you have low stats, so that triggers nicely. And the Revolution, even at one copy, can take out enemies and then all your allies will be purified. I'm not sure yet if she can break into the usual Platoon 1 meta. I think Cthulhu has slightly more to offer there right now. But yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Thanks to Helios for the visuals used in this video. Stay tuned for top level arena footage on this channel featuring this new Storm character. Like this video if you found it helpful. I very much appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.